Praise the Lord. First Kings chapter 18 in your Bible tonight. Wasn't that wonderful? Enjoyed the good choir music, the good specials. You may be seated. I enjoy the good orchestra we had tonight. Brother C.T., I like them fog machines. Amen. The Lord is good. He's awesome. He's worthy of our praise. I'm glad the devil got defeated at Calvary. And I'm glad he's a liar, he's a loser, and he is limited. But Jesus is Lord, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody tonight and say, I'm saved and you can't do nothing about it, praise God. Amen. First Kings chapter number 18 in your Bible tonight. Good to see Dr. Hurt. I've been, Brother Steve, we're the only one still alive that was here 30 some years ago. We got to hang on. Man. First Kings chapter 18, verse number 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of an abundance of rain. He said, I got a word from God, and we're going to wait and see what God is going to do. The sound of an abundance of rain. And so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he said, say this with me tonight, there is nothing. Say that with me again. There is nothing. The servant went up to look just like the man of God told him to. And he came back with this report, nothing. I don't feel nothing. I don't hear nothing. I don't see nothing. There is nothing. And so the Bible said in verse 43, and he said, well then, just forget it and go back home. I guess God's not going to keep his word. I must be reading out one of them funny Bibles. Let me read it right. And he said, go again seven times. Nothing time is not quitting time. Nothing time is not turning back time. Nothing time is not going away from God time. Nothing time is going again time. Go again seven times. Verse 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, thou risest a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say unto Ahab, and have thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Verse 45, and it came to pass, and by the way, it always does. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And say this with me tonight. And there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And in this text tonight, they go from no rain to the sound of rain to the appearance of rain to a great rain. For once again, God has honored and kept his word. What I believe we have tonight in this text is an Old Testament illustration of a New Testament verse. The Bible said in the New Testament in James 5, 17, that Elijah was a man subject unto like passion. That verse means tonight that Elijah was a frail, needy human being like all of us are under this tabernacle tonight because he was subject to like passions. He not only knew what it was, to be a man of great faith, but he knew what it was to be a man of great failure. Because he was subject to like passions, 
He not only knew what it was like to soar with the eagles, but he knew what it was like to be in the valley and cluck with the buzzards. He knew what it was to enjoy the sunshine of God's blessing, and he knew what it was to undergo the agony of defeat. Because he is a man subject to like passion, he knows how to experience the fire of God on the mountain. But he knows how to wait and agonize with God in the valley under the juniper tree. He was a man that was subject to like passion. And I believe in our text tonight, he is going through what I call a nothing season. Let me say that again. He is going through what I call a nothing season. And ladies and gentlemen, if you live in the real world long enough and serve God long enough, you will go through a nothing season. You're going to pray and seemingly there's nothing. You're going to hope, plan, dream, and seemingly there is nothing. You will give it the best shot you got and seemingly there is nothing. If you are a preacher, you'll preach everything you know, everything somebody else has ever preached, and seemingly there is nothing. But I've come to tell you tonight, when you feel nothing, when you see nothing, when you hear nothing, when you know nothing and the devil tells you you ain't nothing, nothing time is not quitting time. Because God has an awesome reputation of stepping in our nothing and of doing something. I'm really not impressed with people that try to make you think every time they pray, they ring the bell. Every time they sing, the glory comes. Every time they preach, it's a grand slam home run. Everybody they witness to gets saved. No, that's not in the real world. Somebody asked me not long ago, Brother Joe, do you ever strike out? Lord, have mercy sometimes. I don't even show up at the game. Several years ago, I was preaching in Dalton, Georgia, the carpet capital of the world. And I took Mrs. Arthur with me that night. And it was one of those nights it wasn't going to happen. You couldn't make them laugh. You couldn't make them cry. You could stand on your head. You could turn somersaults. You could leave your spleen in the baptistry, your kidneys hanging from the chandelier, and God wasn't going to bless that service in this world nor the world to come. And I just got aggravated and frustrated, so I said, all right, bless God, close your head and bow your feet. I'm through preaching. And so we get in the car and we start down the road, and I'm quiet and she's quiet. And I thought after about 30 minutes, I would ease her into a compliment. And so I leaned over there and I said, well, how was it? Now let me say to every one of you men here tonight, when your wife looks at you and says, how was it? She does not want you to tell the truth. She wants you to look at her and say, oh baby, You're the man. If you never win another race, you're still my horse. You say, well, Brother Joe, suppose I have to stretch the truth a little bit. That's what 1 John 1, 9 is in the Bible for. And I said, so how was it? And she looked over there at me in that dignified southern bell way she has, and she said, well, Joe, you do have better material." And I looked at her and said, get behind me, Satan. You say, what was said after that? We're having church. I'm just coming to tell you tonight, you're going to go through a nothing season. You'll pray and seemingly there's nothing. You'll hope and believe and trust with all your heart and seemingly there's nothing. You'll give it the best shot you got. And seemingly there is nothing. But I've come to tell you tonight that nothing time is not quitting time. 
It's not turning back time. It's not giving up on God time. Because I'm telling you, when you see nothing and you hear nothing and you feel nothing and you feel like you ain't doing nothing and the devil tells you you ain't nothing, I'm glad there's a God who has something that I step in your nothing. And when God steps in your nothing and does something, he gets all the praise and all the glory and all the honor because he stepped out of nothing and said let there be light and there was light when man was nothing he breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul Mary had nothing in her womb but he impregnated her with the sinless seed of the eternal God of the ages when he laid in that tomb it looked like nothing was happening but on Easter Sunday morning up from the grave he arose and brother we're living in the perilous times and and days of apostasy but I've come to tell you God is up to something and God can still do something and in the midst of your nothing don't you get discouraged don't turn your back on God press on when there's nothing keep on praying when there's nothing believe God when there's nothing be faithful when there's nothing because God who is something will step in your nothing and God will do something and when he does it we'll say that's something and from our text tonight I want to give you four words to me that unleash the power of this text and it encourages you and I to keep on going when there's nothing number one write this word down tonight the word command the word command twice in this text this young man is commanded by the authority figure that is in his life to go. And not just go, but go seven times. I would like to interview this young man and say, Son, you went like the man of God said. And you looked and there was nothing. And you came back and gave him the report. There is nothing. But he told you to go again. And he told you to go seven times. Son, I want to know, why did you keep going up and down to the top of that hill when there was nothing? I believe he would say this, sir, the reason why I kept going when there was nothing, that's what I was told to do. That's what I was supposed to do. That's what the command was to go even when there is nothing. And by the way, let me clean off a piece of real estate and say this. There is nothing wrong with God's people doing what we ought to do for the simple reason God said to do it. The only reason we need tonight is because that's what God said to do. Can I remind you tonight, he has the sovereign right. He has the creative right. He has the kingly right. He has the Lord right. He has the redemptive right to tell you and I to keep on going for the simple reason because he said so. Can I remind you tonight we go to church because he said so. We read the Bible because he said so. We pray because he said so. We win souls because he said so. We try to do what's right because he said so. Hey ladies and gentlemen we tithe because he said so. We support missions because he said so. We try to win a lost and a dying world of Jesus because he said so. And there ain't nothing wrong with a born again, blood bought child of God just simply doing what's right for the simple reason God said to do it. But preacher, I don't feel nothing. I don't see nothing. I don't think nothing's happening. You just keep on going because God said to go and if you'll keep on going when God said to go the God that said to go a step in your nothing and do something I'm glad we do it because he said so 
Oh, the sun came up this morning because he said so. The moon's gonna shine after a while because he said so. The wind is gonna pollinate the plants because he said so. The white clouds will bump into each other and give us lightning and thunder and rain because he said so. The ocean will slap its blue foam against the silver sand because he said so. The stars will shine because he said so. The earth orbits in space and spins on its axis because he said so. Gravity pulls because he said so. I'm breathing tonight because he said so. I'm saved tonight because he said so. Jesus got up from the grave because he said so. Hey, he wrote the Bible because he said so. He's coming back to get us because he said so. He prepared a place because he said so. The devil is defeated because he said so. The cherubims and the seraphims and the yellow beings of the glory world bow and worship him because he said so. And ladies and gentlemen, if creation does it because he said so, if the celestial city does it because he said so, how much more should a blood washed, Holy Ghost regenerated child of the living God Keep on going, cause he said so. I'm glad we have the command, because he said so. Go, the word command. Number two in the text, write down this word, the word compliance. Beside of that in parentheses, write down the word obedience. It seems like today everybody It's trying to find some secret formula to the Christian life. But ladies and gentlemen, I can give you one word tonight that will unleash the anointing of God in your life and it's the word obedience. Obedience, obedience. Son, why did you go? He said, sir, I can't make it rain. In fact, it's beyond my ability to make it rain. Joe, I'm not even responsible if it rains or not. The only responsibility I have is to obey, live a life of obedience. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me tonight. Everybody can't preach great sermons. Everybody can't sing great songs. Everybody can't give a million dollars to the work of Christ, but every holy a spirit regenerated child of God can live a life of obedience. I believe God honors obedience and obedience honors God. Man, let me reemphasize this again. This young man, it was not his responsibility to make it rain. It was beyond his ability to make it rain. That boy couldn't make it rain the best day of his life. And he's not going to be held accountable if it never rains one drop. The only thing he's accountable for is to obey, obey, obey. I want revival to come. I want to see souls saved. I'd love to see the showers of blessings. But I well know tonight, I can't save anybody. I can't loose the chains of sin. I can't emancipate somebody from the addictions of the devil. I have not the power. It is beyond me to bring revival. But there is a God in the glory world who has all power given unto him and in heaven and in earth. And God can do what we can't do if we'll go a doing what we're supposed to do. Oh, let me tell you this tonight. There's one thing about it. He ain't gonna see it if he don't go. Can I say that one again? He ain't gonna see the rain if he don't go. I hear this all the time. Brother Joe, I wish the Lord would bless my praying. We'll pray. I wish the Lord would bless my witnessing. Well, then witness. Oh, I wish the Lord would bless my praise. We'll praise. Man, I wish the Lord would bless my preaching and my teaching. Well, preach and teach. God's not gonna bless what you ain't been a-doing. 
He ain't gonna bless what you ain't been a doing. The greatest way to get God on what you're doing, start doing it and live the life of obedience. Did you know tonight you can believe in the sovereignty of God and not be a Calvinist? You can believe that God is sovereign and not be a Calvinist? Because right in this Bible that, pro- that proclaims the sovereignty of God, you say, what is that? That just simply means God can do what he wants, when he wants, where he wants, how he wants, to who, by, through, to, for he wants, and he does not need or ask our permission. But in this Bible, holding hand in hand with the sovereignty of God, never at odds, but always in harmony. It's the responsibility of man to respond to the sovereign acts of God. But it was a sovereign act when God stepped in nothing and there was a great rain. But it was a human responsibility Whoop! when the boy went up and looked seven times. It was a sovereign act of God that Jesus was born of a virgin. It was a sovereign act of God that he died upon the cross. It was a sovereign, I feel like preaching tonight. It was a sovereign act of God when he rose again the third day. But 45 years ago it was human responsibility that looked toward that cross and repented of my sin and trusted Christ as my savior Bible study time are you ready how many believes only a sovereign God can separate the Red Sea how many believe only a sovereign God can take the bitter waters and make them sweet how many believes only a sovereign God can make a dead axe head swim like a fish? How many believe that only a sovereign God could lock the jaws of the lion and only a sovereign God can shield the boys from the burning fire? How many believe that only a sovereign God can turn the water into wine? How many believes only a sovereign God can take five loaves and two small fishes and feed the 5,000? Only God could do that. Oh, but standing in the shadows is a responsibility of some child of God living the life of obedience. Oh, Moses couldn't separate the sea, but he could lift up the rod. He couldn't turn the, he couldn't turn the bitter water sweet, but he could chunk in the tree. Oh, Elijah couldn't make the accent swim, but he can throw in the stick. Woo! I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, hey, them boys couldn't turn the water into wine, but they got to fill up the pots. That little boy couldn't feed the 5,000, but he got to bring the lunch. May I just say this tonight? God's not looking for somebody to separate the Red Sea, make the exit swim, turn the bitter water sweet, turn the water into wine, and feed the 5,000. He's looking for somebody That'll lift up the rod, cut down the tree, chuck in the stick, mm-hmm. fill the water pots, and pack a lunch. Hey, I can't save, but I can tell them about a man who can. I can't emancipate them, but I can tell them about a man who can. I can't bring revival, but I can call on my God and look to my God and trust the sovereign, omnipotent power of the eternal God of the ages. God will do something when there's nothing. If you'll keep on doing what you're supposed to do, obedience is better than sacrifice. Woo! Command. Compliance. Heard the number three, write in this word down tonight. The word consistency. Beside of that word in parentheses, write this word down tonight, faithfulness, faithfulness. Notice the Bible said, and it came to pass at the seventh time, not the first time, not the second time, not the third time, this boy got to see something when there was nothing because he was being 
faithful to God. Oh, can I quote a few verses? The Bible said it is required in a steward that he be found faithful. Paul said that God counted him faithful, putting him into the ministry. And I'm glad, ladies and gentlemen, the criteria of the judgment is not going to be well done. Thy good and successful servant, but it's going to be well done. Thy good and faithful servant. It's not going to be you've been successful over a bunch, but it's going to be you've been faithful over a few. And the reason why I believe God used the word faithful instead of successful, I got a hankering. When we get to the other side, our definition of success may not be God's definition of success. You say, Brother Joe, who do you think a successful preacher is? A man that hears the call of God and responds to that call of God and does his best to honor God till the trumpet sounds. He is a great success. Let me tell you what a successful Christian is. To walk in the fear of God and the comfort of the Holy Ghost and just obey the Lord. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. I believe God honors faithfulness and faithfulness honors God he got to see something when there was nothing cause he was faithful oh let me hurry I, I'm not like some of mine and your friends I don't know everything about the Bible son me and you've got some friends they know everything about the Bible if you don't believe it ask them they're legends in their own mind. Brother Townsend and I have preached with the greatest preachers in America. You know how I know? They told us they were. <laughs> he and I have a friend that preaches on the Antichrist. It's the greatest sermon I've ever heard. I've never heard such. And I said to him the other day, I said, dear God, it sounds like that sermon on the Antichrist. You even know who it is. He said, I should. I was married to her daughter for a long time. Say amen right there now. Son, I got some friends of mine. They know who the witnesses are. They know how many hires is in the horse's tail in Revelation 19. They're so smart. They even know where Cain got his wife. You'll get that after a while. So I don't know everything about the Bible. I don't know how far this young servant had to go from where Elijah told him to go look seven times. The Bible doesn't say. I know he did more than just look up. He had to go. And he had to go seven times. I don't know if it was 10 feet I don't know if it was 20 feet. I don't know if it was 40 feet. I don't know if it was from uh, uh, Elijah to Buddha. I have no, I have no idea. Sorry, Jesse, I was just picking at you a little bit. How, how, how far that was. I don't know if it was 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. But listen to this. He'd already been once. He'd already been up there and back once. Well, that's two trips. Now he's got to go up and back seven more. I believe that's seven up, seven back. That's 14. One up before, one back before. That's 16. He has walked up the same path, walked up the same road 16 times. Brother, he has a well-worn path to nothing. He knows what nothing looks like. He knows what nothing smells like. He knows what nothing sounds like. He knows where the ditches are. He knows where the bugs are. He knows where the rocks are. He knows the landscape. I mean, he has a well-worn path to nothing. And it would have been so easy for him to say, 
I've did this before and there's nothing. The same old road and there's nothing. I've prayed and prayed and there's nothing. I've preached and preached and there's nothing. I've tried and tried and there's nothing. I've held on to God and held on to God and there is nothing. I want to slip up beside of that young man and say, son, I know it's bound to get boring. It may be a little mundane and sometimes it may be hard to put one foot in front of the other but you be faithful you be faithful you just keep on going and God will stay up in your nothing and he will do something there's people in this room tonight if you're not careful you're going to stop one sermon too short one prayer too short one act of faith too short but preacher I ain't a seeing nothing one more time but preacher I ain't feeling nothing. One more time I've been praying for my children and they get worse the more I pray. Pray one more time. Trust one more time. Believe one more time. Fast one more time. Get a hold of God one more time. Cause who knoweth whether the next time might be the very time when God who is everything will step in your nothing and he'll do something if you'll just preach one one more time, shout one more time, pray one more time, just be faithful to God. Just be faithful to God. And turn to somebody tonight beside of you and say, in the name of Jesus, one more time. If your husband's here tonight and he's a preacher, look at him and point your finger, go ahead. Preach it one more time. Now you look at your husband, sister, and say, Obey me one more time. Oh, I wonder how many times do we quit praying too soon? Do we quit preaching too soon? We give up too soon. God doesn't work on our calendar. God doesn't work on our almanac. God doesn't pay any attention to our seasons. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He's the sovereign God of heaven, the eternal God of heaven. He's never been a day late nor dollar short. He's never made a mistake. He's never failed you. He's never forsaken you. And he will not forget about you even when there's nothing. Just keep on going. And when there's nothing, God will do something. Just be faithful and keep on going when there is nothing. And so I see him on that 16th trip. Let's look at him on that 15th trip. He's been up and back 15 times. He has wore out doing, seeing nothing. And he says to that preacher, what am I supposed to do now? And the preacher said, one more time. And if he'd have been a good independent Baptist, this is probably how he'd have went that one more time. I don't know why in the world I'm doing this. God help us. If anyone makes it, Lord, surely I will. Nobody appreciates me. Ain't got no plaque but my name on it. Ain't nobody even called and said happy birthday. Hallelujah, how are you, Honolulu? <laughs> and he goes up that last time and says, I don't even, Jesse, I don't even know why I'm going, I don't even know why I'm going to look. It ain't nothing happened in them other 15 trips. What's different this time? Go on, son, look one more time. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And son, by faith, he looked up one more time. And I believe he went, whoa. And I believe his trip back wasn't like his trip up. I believe that last trip, going up there that last time, may have been like this. But honey, after he saw that little cloud, like a man's hand, I believe he come back like this. I believe he said, whoa, 
Man of God, you ain't going to believe it because I don't even believe it, but I saw it. And don't get real excited because it ain't a real big one. But I saw this little cloud like a man's hand coming up out of the sea. And I be boy Elijah saying, boy, that ain't no man's hand. You say, Brother Joe, what hand was that? That come up out of the sea, the hand that scooped out the oceans and heaped up the mountains and traced down the rivers and thugged the moon and the stars, the hand that separated the waters, that hand that reached further down than you could reach up, that hand that led you and fed you and guided you, the sovereign hand of God, the merciful hand of God, the providing hand of God, the holy hand of God, the omnipotent hand of God, the precious hand of God, the victorious hand of God, the eternal hand of God, the satisfying hand of God, the devil defeating mountain moving valley exalted, hell robbing heaven raising hand of almighty God hang on son the hand is about to come God's about to touch you again God's about to anoint you again God's going to use you again just keep on going to the hand of God comes on the scene one more time one more time I close with this one number four write down the word Confidence. Two times in this passage it says, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. You know, I want to interview that young man, Pastor, and ask him, why did you keep on going when there was nothing? Well, I want to ask that older preacher before we leave here tonight, Elijah, why did you tell that boy to keep on going seven times when he told you the first time there was nothing. Why did you do that? Elijah, do you know something we don't know? Have you seen something we've not seen? Elijah, do you have some inside information? And I believe he might would say, well, not necessarily, but I have been where y'all ain't been. What do you mean by that, Elijah? He said, don't you know my testimony? I was nothing when God found me and my family was nothing when God found me and I didn't have nothing to give God when God found me, so he must love nothing. And he took me down by that brook and that was nothing. But in my nothing, the ravens brought me bread and fresh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and I drank out of that brook until there was nothing. And then they sent me to a widow's house, and she didn't have nothing. But we drank out of her nothing, ate out of her nothing, and we had a time nothing. And then tragedy struck. Her only son died, and she's already a widow, and now she's really reduced to nothing. But I prayed over that boy and the Holy Ghost power came on him and that boy got up from his deathbed. And son, don't forget, in the first part of this chapter, me and you had nothing, we were nothing, and we stood on Mount Carmel and the four, uh, 450 false prophets, and we called on God, and he did something when we were nothing, and now we're something, and they're nothing. Son, I just want to tell you, if God will show up by the brook, if God will show up by the barrel, if God will show up by the boy, if God will show up by the battle, he'll make it rain one more time. He'll keep his word one more time. Son, if God's done it before, he's able to do it again. Past experience breeds present confidence. Has God met needs before? Has God still storms before? Before? Has God solved problems before? Has God met needs before? Well, guess what? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can speak one more time. He can provide one more time. He can revive one more time. What God's done before, God can do it again. Yeah. Woo. And the Bible said, 
and there was a great rain. You know what that means in Hebrew? It got on. You know what that means in South Carolina and Georgia? It rained cats and dogs. You know how to tell if it's raining cats and dogs? You'll go outside and step in a poodle. It was funnier when you told it, Brother Steve. Anybody ever heard this? We had a gully washer. My northern friends would say, hallelujah for the earth. It got on, amen. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, it got on. Frog strangler, gully washer, a great rain. And I got a wild imagination. Please let me use it on my way home. I believe that young boy is out there in the middle of the rain. He ain't got enough sense to get it. He ain't about to leave that rain. I believe that rain's coming down. I believe it's raining on Elijah. I believe it's raining on Ahab. I believe it's raining on Israel. I believe it's raining on Syria. I believe it's raining on Elijah. And somewhere it's raining on that boy. I mean, I believe he's got his tongue out. He's enjoying every drop of that rain. And as that rain runs down his face, I believe I can hear him say, I'm glad I went one more time. I'm glad I went one more time. I'm glad I went one more time. And I believe over here sitting in a mud puddle may have been Elijah going, I told you, boy. I told you, boy. I told you, boy. I've come to tell somebody tonight if you'll keep on praying when there's nothing and keep on going when there's nothing and keep on serving God when there's nothing. When God does something, you'll be glad you prayed one more time. You went one more time. You believe one more time. When there's nothing, God's up to something. And when God steps in and does something, you'll be glad you kept on going when there was nothing. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your mercy and your love and your grace. And Lord, I'm glad you wrote about people like Elijah in the Bible, flawed and marred and imperfect. But, oh, God, you stepped in their nothing. And you did something. And Father, we pray that you'll help some home, some family. Maybe there's a preacher here tonight, Lord. Let's give it the best shot he's got. Seemingly there's nothing. Step in his nothing world and do something. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name.